Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to a macro video. We're going to take a look at an exam answer, building A star, chains of reasoned analysis and evaluation to a question on the potential benefits of inward direct investment. Here's the question with reference to examples of specific developing countries. Evaluate the potential benefits of inward FDI. Uh, inward FDI, of course, can come into any country, both developed and uh, developing, emerging. These are the countries with the highest investment flows as a share of their GDP in 2018. Malta, Hong Kong, Singapore, of course, are rich advanced countries. But notice there, Sierra Leone, Mozambique, Mongolia, Congo and Cambodia all achieved inflows of investment of more than 10% of their GDP in 2018. A lot of these countries already open to trade. They have a high trade to GDP ratio. What are the wider macroeconomic benefits potentially of inflows of FDI? Well, for an exam, you need to build two main KA points, two main chains of reasoned analysis. And it does say with reference to examples of specific developing countries. So you need to build up a, a really good profile of, of a cluster of countries as part of your revision. First point is here. One potential benefit of inward FDI is that it can lift a country's trend growth rate, which in turn helps to improve per capita incomes and reduce poverty. For example, India attracted nearly $50 billion of FDI in 2019. This is an injection of external finance into their circular flow, helping to avoid that gap between savings and investment, which is often characteristic of lower and middle income countries. Investment in physical productive capacity in industries such as textiles, car manufacturing, financial services. You don't have to have the data, but just good relevant examples. That leads to an increase in the size of a country's capital stock. Uh, and you may have used the solo growth model. You may have looked, you may have looked at the Howard Domar growth model. But using the neoclassical solo model, an increase in capital per worker will then lead to a rise, a rise in the steady state growth rate. Workers will have access to improved capital machinery, which over time can raise productivity. Output per capita is mainly determined by productivity. And provided workers are trained to use machinery and new technologies effectively, then high levels of inward FDI leads to an outward shift of long-run aggregate supply. And it can also lead to an increase in exports as a country such as India builds comparative advantage. Higher exports... Increased productive capacity are shown in my analysis diagram. And uh, you can use different diagrams. I've just drawn fairly straightforward ADAS diagram showing the impact of an a increase in AD. And also potentially, of course, an increase in aggregate supply from AS1 to AS2. Now, making the analysis point that FDI has both demand and supply side effects is clearly going to affect uh, and improve your analysis score in the exam. My second point, uh, okay, another potential benefit. Well, let's take another example. Cambodia has attracted inward FDI uh, of uh, just under $4 billion in 2018, over 12% of their GDP, which is a significant figure for a country with ambitions to be an upper middle income country in the next decade or so. Cambodia's per capita GNI is $3,300, although the economy is growing by 7% a year, their savings rate is only 13% compared to an investment ratio of 23%. So therefore, that helps overcome the savings gap. And FDI into Cambodian industries, such as tourism and garments, can help create formal employment, more jobs, especially for women. There are now over 800,000 female garments jobs in Cambodia. And this has been a big factor behind rural urban migration within the country. I'm using Cambodia as an example here. I've done my country profile on Cambodia it's actually on YouTube if you want to look at it, 15-minute video. That gives me the contextual awareness so I can build a great point in the exam. A rise in employment and incomes from the new jobs created by FDI can have a direct benefit to human development outcomes, whilst also addressing significant gender disparities for a young, fast-growing population. So in Cambodia, less than one well, one girl in six has secondary education and levels of stunting among children under five are high. So formal jobs, waged labour, for example, in textile manufacturing, can help improve basic nutrition and access to schooling. In this sense, 
FDI can contribute both to stronger growth but also lowering poverty. So this second point is really about the potential benefit in terms of literally development outcomes, formal wage labour, gender employment opportunities, uh, improved schooling and nutrition. And here's my paragraph put together. Oftentimes examiners want just a chunky paragraph with a chain of reasoning developing your analysis point. You only have to make two analysis paragraphs, so develop them in a little bit more detail. Uh, I use social media a lot to get these little examples. Uh, the Twitter feeds of of uh, news organisations and academics is often a very, a very useful source. So just recently I just typed in Cambodia FDI and found that... Uh, China um, is responsible for over 40% of FDI into Cambodia. I didn't know that before. And of course, that raises the question about the, the risk of a country becoming too dependent uh, on FDI from one, one nation. And then just very recently, a $4 million solar farm investment from a Malaysian energy company. Again, really good example to latch on to. Cambodia trying to reduce their energy um, dependence from imports, uh, think about the types of jobs created in a solar farm, where, where do the solar panels come from, etc. That kind of example sticks in the mind and can be very useful application in an exam. Now we need to evaluate. Uh, here are just a few potential, the question says potential benefits. So clearly you're looking to build evaluation into your answer. Uh, foreign multinationals might take advantage of weak laws and environmental protection, so there could be some risk to natural capital, uh, particularly from investment in, in farming and forestry and mining. Multinationals, TNCs, for example, clothing companies have been criticised heavily in the past for, for poor working conditions when outsourcing manufacturing. That's not true of all businesses, but I'm sure you can find some examples where that might be the case. The profits from FTI, the incomes, the returns, are often repatriated, sent back to shareholders in the host country. And of course, that's an outflow from the circular flow, limiting the potential benefits. Multinationals may only employ local labour in lower skilled jobs rather than skilled managerial roles. That, can, again, could impact the wage effects. And crucially, really good point here, the share of locally sourced components for those FDI projects, be it a solar panel farm or a new railway or physical factory, it's often quite low and this reduces the positive multiplier effect of inward investment because, of course, you're importing a lot of components and technology. So there are some evaluation points. I just want to give you a couple of examples of uh, an, uh, really good evaluation phrases. Here's one. The impact of FDI depends on. Depends on is a great phrase to use. Whether inward investment is sustainable in the long run. For example, many Chinese textile companies they invested heavily in Thailand, but rising unit wage costs means they can easily relocate to Indonesia or Bangladesh or Cambodia, for example, where labour costs are high. In other words, capital is footloose. Oftentimes the FDI isn't necessarily there for the long term. FDI tends to be more volatile, for example, than remittance flows. And here's another really great evaluation phrase to use. Lots of A-star students do this. In theory, in theory, inward FDI is beneficial to aggregate demand and supply for countries such as India, Cambodia. But in practice, in practice, FDI might be too heavily dependent on the creation of special zones, which then limits the tax revenue that the government receives. Um, so that's a good factor. And investment and production designed for export in those special zones also makes a country vulnerable to global economic shocks such as a depression a recession or a trade war so there are two examples of how you can use evaluation phrases to really smash the final bits of an essay there we go a quick look at how to build a star analysis and a star evaluation on this question about inward investment <laughs>